Hey everybody, I have some really special guests with me today from the internet show Welcome to Anhedonia. I could introduce them for you, but you know, for today, I'll let them introduce themselves. Oh, wait, how about, okay, cool. Um, I'm going <laughs> to, I'm going to introduce Jeff. This is Jeff Wilkerson. Hi. Uh, and he's an actor and a musician Hi, and a father. And his wife's name Hi. is Devin. Um, Devin. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. Now you go ahead, Jeff. You introduce. Uh, uh, I will introduce Paul. Tri- <laughs> I, all right. Is it Trigiani or Trigiani? <laughs> I hear both. It's Paul Trigiani, producer, writer, uh, director, extraordinaire, and uh, more organized than any of us. <laughs> Paul. And, uh, hello, everyone. My name is uh, Paul Trigiani, and I am all of the things Jeff said. And to my left is Jolie Darrow, who uh, is an actor, writer, performer, and who plays Ixiavi on the new upcoming season of Welcome to Anadonia. Uh, I am Jolie, <laughs> and I'm going to introduce mad genius and cult leader Kevin Kelly, the father <laughs> of this whole entire project. None of us would be here without him. Right, because I'm your father's. <laughs> <laughs> You're all my sons. You're all my fathers. Aww. You're all my fathers. My my <laughs> my three fathers. And you all and you all know who I am. I'm Tyler Green, the wacky, awkward dude who's interviewing four people from a web show today. Yay. So how is everyone? Hi Tyler. Happy to be here. Yeah. Alright, great. All right, so I'm gonna be honest with you, Tyler. I'm a I'm a bit warm. It's a bit warm in the house right now. You look Same. fucked up. <laughs> oh yeah. I... <laughs> Maybe you're gonna comb through your I hair. Should... What? <laughs> Nothing. Well, I will, I don't, no, I will not do that. <laughs> <laughs> my hair is fine the way it is. I am who I am. You love me the way I am. This is me at my best and my worst. Deal with it. <laughs> I, you're perfect. I do you're love perfect you the way you Kevin, are. There you are. <laughs> Here I am. Hey, it's Kevin again. There's the face. Hi. You could have combed right, your hair, Kevin. Sweet. <laughs> no, I was, I was, I was calling the kettle black earlier when I told Paul to do that. It's right, a little insider sweet. business so. talk. Uh, we call the kettle black. We call the pot the kettle. You know. <laughs> Okay, so I'm going to start off uh, how I usually just started off. I just want to know, how did you guys get your start, you know, like working together? Um, Jolie, how did it start? Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, you, you're the one who's been here since day one. Jolie. Yeah. Yeah, and I was still in high school. What? <laughs> Kevin, Kevin, if you would, if you would start from how uh, the first uh, pilot of Anadonia came to be. That would be a great place to start. Okay, I guess that's a good. Point. Yeah, because the pilot, the pilot's actually how I started with the show. Too, oh, neat. So. Okay. Um, yeah. W- w- we we uh, I was building puppets, and I was animating, and I w- was like planning on making this um, thing with with puppets and animation, and I didn't know what it was going to be. So a friend and I just started writing. Um, and I was like, I have these puppets, and I have these animations, and I have this man named Jeff. <laughs> what do I What do I do with all of them? And I also knew Paul, and I desperately wanted to make Paul work with me. And I was like, how do I trick another man into being my friend? <laughs> um, and I said, I know, puppets. Um, so I, I, I worked three jobs for a while so that I could save up enough money to quit the three jobs for like two months to make Welcome to Anadonia. Uh, Jeff and I would hang out and kind of uh, workshop the... We we didn't workshop it. We just hung out and listened to records and talked about it. Um, (laughs) I met Michael and Mark at Monkey Boys Productions and they wanted to help produce it. So I went to their puppet studio and they... uh, I would say, we want to make this giant puppet that's like a thing that only eats ponies. And I'd show them my drawing and they'd tell me how to do it and then I'd make it. And that went on for about two or three months. And then we shot the pilot and Paul came in and Paul really came in and kind of shaped everything so that it wasn't a total disaster. Um, it was only kind of a disaster. <laughs> um, I, I don't think it was a disaster at all. Well, I think that the important uh, 
I don't know, the important thing to me here or thing to, to bring up. So Kevin was in a, a sketch comedy group, uh, uh, the early parts of a sketch comedy group that I used to, that I was asked to direct. And I was directing a sketch. Someone drinking a soda? <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> This is now this is now an ASMR. So, uh, <laughs> uh, and so Kevin was in this group, then quit, and then so he and I knew each other for like, you know, two years. What was it? Three years previous to when that started. Um, yeah, something like that. Yeah. From from uh, this group called Camp Woods, and then Kevin left Camp Woods to go make puppets, and then three years later he was like, "Hey, remember me? I was in Camp Woods. Do you want to come and make this?" puppet movie with me it was a little more smooth than that it was i didn't like <laughs> i know i disappear every now and then but it was not like i didn't disappear for three years it was kind of like this like transition from doing sketch comedy to doing welcome to anyway i'm sorry go on paul in, in your mind it was but in my mind you disappeared <laughs> <laughs> i showed up on your doorstep in my mind you were just gone. and uh yeah. then you came back and you're like hey can you help me do this and i uh Kevin was had written this thing and had been making puppets and I had a background in production. And so he was like, hey, can you help make this? And that's how we started the first puppet, uh, the first, sorry, the first pilot of it and shot for, and, and now there's, the ocean is there. So <laughs> Uh, but, but, but how we ended up shooting this, that, that first thing for, you know, a uh, 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 half a month in a very, very cold warehouse in South Philadelphia in December. And uh, that we did that. And that's where it was birthed from. Um, so Kevin already had a script and he, he, he and the dude that he wrote it with um, brought me in. And uh, we talked about who would play this lead character, Jeff. And I didn't know that Kevin already had a guy in mind. And I was like, well, here's eight guys that could do it. And he's like, I have a guy. I didn't know they already knew a guy. Uh, <laughs> he was trying to be kind. Um, and so me and Kevin and Jeff and Michael and Mark and some other folks, um, Kevin Gallagher being one of them, spent, you know, uh, uh, two, two weeks in a very, very cold warehouse uh, in South Philadelphia making that pilot in yeah. December or January of whatever year that was. Uh, yeah, there were 2000. Uh... It was 2011 11, into yeah. 2012, yeah. Little known fact, uh, for the role of Jeff on Welcome to Anadonia, Jeff actually had to legally change his name. <laughs> <laughs> I remember yeah. getting a message via Facebook I think, or text or something like that from Kevin. A little bit of prehistory. Kevin and I, um, the first day that Kevin and I met is actually on record, is on film. Yeah. Um, really? Yes. <laughs> I had just moved back to Philadelphia uh, from Chicago, where I went it's to pronounced Chicago, Chicago. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> um, where I I moved out there in '04 to to study and you know take classes at Second City and whatnot. And then like the the week that I moved back, I went on the, the now defunct uh, film dot org and answered an ad for an audition. And uh, round of getting the part, and it was Kevin's cousin Andrew Hobson who had written and directed this film called "I'm Dating the Antichrist." And if you and want to see me and Jeff be uh, actors, actors, yeah, you can watch it each other. Yeah. Uh, so All right. this, the, if you watch it online, the scene in the graveyard, I had literally met Kevin like that second. <laughs> <laughs> but here's your line. Here's Kevin. Here's your lines. And uh, if you know anything about film sets, it's what the old cliche is: uh, you 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 do the acting for free, but you get paid for waiting. So Kevin and I became friends like really fast because we had so much in common. Like we were about, both humans <laughs> yeah. both humans and love puppets about a yeah. year later after filming that after it was finally finished being edited and ready to be submitted to festivals and whatnot i get it either it was either a text or facebook message from kevin saying hey i've got this this idea this script and uh a friend of mine i've been writing and it's a it's real wacky and puppets and all this kind of stuff and we want you to be a part of it and we named the lead character jeff because we want you to be jeff <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, now whose story are they going to believe? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's like a, that's a pocket. So, um, <laughs> and, and 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 Kevin likes to tell the story much in the same way that he, that he uh, tells the story about uh, getting Paul involved with the whole thing. Is how does he trick somebody to be um, 
to, to, to be his friend and everything. But uh, honestly, like what, you know, I, I would have said yes anyway. I mean, <laughs> 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 you know, if you're, if you're an artist or an actor, you, I mean, I don't know who wouldn't just jump at the chance to do something, to do anything. I mean, even if we had never hung out after that, I mean, the script was hilarious and, this, and, and creative and unique, but it was also a script and I wasn't doing anything. So, <laughs> so uh, yeah, of course, I'll take the role without having to audition. And fortunately, we, you know, uh, we all got along, you know, super well uh, and uh, have continued to work together because it's been an amazing um, creative experience and family all along. And it's great to just always meet new people uh, along the way. Jolie, you've been quiet. <laughs> I, I do. I do have questions that I want to that I want to ask her later on about you know her character, but but right now I want to I want to go a little more into the origins of the show. For example, uh, so Kevin, how did you get into puppetry? Uh, uh I mean, like you know, <laughs> uh, how, how does anybody? Uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I I don't know. I just was um I was talking about this today actually with my friend. Um, I just. The, the thing I've had my whole life is this Kermit doll. Uh, I still have it. Uh, I I think it was a, given to my mom when I was born. And I just have always been surrounded by and loved uh, Muppets. And, uh, you know, it's, it's so such a boring, cliche response. But like that, you know, unfortunately, my the story is boring. I grew up watching the Muppets and Pee Wee's Playhouse and... Yes. Looney Tunes and um, a bunch of things like that. And I just, uh, my mom's an artist, so we kind of grew up always making things. And I always loved making puppets. And, like, uh, <laughs> I would, you know, we, we would, like, go to art camp and, you know, you, you're supposed to, like, make something and they add a clay and they'd fire it in the kiln. And everybody was making, you know, like, vases and normal things that you make. And I was making, like, you know, gonzo and <laughs> stuff like that um the thing that only eats ponies the thing that only yeah i've been i've only been making the thing that only eats ponies my whole life um i had one idea and this is all just to glorify the thing that only eats ponies um i yeah i i i, I, I uh i just like making things and um <laughs> yeah this is, I, <laughs> this is this is exciting isn't it um <laughs> I don't mean to quote Scorsese or anything like yeah. that. I love making things. <laughs> yeah. I think that Kubrick said, I just like to make things. So, you know, following the footsteps of greatness here. No. Um, yeah, I just like to make things. And I like uh, music. And I like photography. And uh, uh, this just made sense. Yeah, I mean, I, that's how. That's really how I would describe, you know, Welcome to Ad Hedonia. It's just, like, you know, like a wacky you know, mashup of, like, all things, like, pop culture, like, you know, like, music, puppetry, claymation, all that stuff, like, it's basically, like, a, a punk rock version of Pee Wee's Playhouse, which I love so much. Oh, good. I love everything about that idea. Good, good, yeah. It's, right? it's, no, it's, I think that's an apt right? description. That's kind of, like, what we always kind of, like, well, use that as a benchmark uh, in the early stages of the creative process, but, you know, it was always sort of this, like, you know, sort of punk rock, uh, you know, bent on the, uh, you know, sort of So I think familiar format. Yeah, something Paul and I talked about, um, and eventually Paul, Jeff, and Jolie and I all talked about, is that puppetry um, is used a lot of the times as, like, a novelty in adult entertainment. So it's like instead of focusing on character or focusing on like world building with puppetry, the whole joke is that it is a puppet cursing or a puppet having sex or a puppet, like, you know, being a drug addict. And it's like, Oh, look, it's funny because it's a puppet and puppets are for children. And something we, we really <laughs> wanted to do was kind of take this idea of Pee Wee's Playhouse, you know, where there's this world of this fun, there's this fun, crazy world and expand, like, what would that be like if it was the real world, if the real world was, just this, you know, absurd, surreal version of reality, I guess. Um, and I'll, really I'll, just like... I, I'll, I think it's slightly unfair to say that anything we've done is a, a punk rock version of Pee-wee's Playhouse because it uh, ignores the inherently punk quality of Pee-wee. 
uh, and Pee Wee's Playhouse, which was in its own right an avant-garde uh, punk aesthetic and uh, pursuit uh, in its time. Um, yeah, yeah. We've gotten to the point now where, like, you know, uh, punk is considered this sort of gritty, edgy. Like, there has to be this sort of mean-spirited edge to it. But if you watch all of Paul Rubin's original shorts and uh, uh, Pee Wee's Big Adventure, Pee Wee's Playhouse, it, it was punk in its time. It is punk. I mean, yeah. Oh yeah, absolutely. Is, right. So, so to say that we were doing the punk version of it just ignores it. It was just a, it was a, a modern progression of what they established, and and continues to yeah. and tries. Yeah, that right? makes so, sense. So, um, like to do like a a, a punk rock piece playhouse is is ignoring the trailblazingness of what that show and what that character was. Okay, but, yeah, that yeah, totally, totally that totally right. makes sense. Fair enough. I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> no, you don't have to apologize. Paul's just rude. <laughs> Paul just Paul's rude and can't take a compliment. Yeah. All right. Okay. I'll go back on mute. And no, I, I do. I do. I do, no, I do agree joking, with Paul. Man. I do agree with Paul. But I also, I, you know, we love you, Paul. Uh, well, I guess yeah, what right, what so, we do uh, have in common with that show is that we, you know, we we we're not we our show doesn't really sort of like rely on convention. I suppose you could say. It doesn't rely on the fact right. that, like, you know, this is what's expected of. Like Kevin was saying, was we didn't want to do what was expected of a puppet show. We didn't want to do what was expected of a, a sitcom uh, or a web series. Really, it was just, yeah. the only thing we wanted to use from sitcoms was naming the star uh, after his real name, like right. Tony Danza, in everything Tony Danza yeah. is in. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Hashtag the Jeff Jerry show. Seinfeld. Yeah. 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 Well, I remember. I remember the very first meeting we had. We went to a diner um, to meet the Monkey Boys for the first time when they were. They, we were recording them as a as a production studio, and the ver first question they asked us when we sat down was, "Why puppets?" Yeah, and we, think, we didn't have a good answer. <laughs> but, no, but I, it was something along the lines of what we have been saying right now. Is that you know, like we, you know, bear in mind we're not using this as a shtick. You know, we're not using puppets as a as a as, as a means to kind of like be irreverent and everything like that you know most people don't realize the 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 the, the lush you know even i don't really realize i mean i'm not I'm, i've been exposed to it but i don't under, you know fully understand the, the lush history of of puppetry throughout the world and how you know it's it's really regarded as a, as a mature you know uh medium uh and and storytelling device all over the world like here we've got you know sesame street you know, so people just kind of regard it like, oh, we'd only use puppets to like talk to kids, you know, and we wanted it to be, you know, representative of the, uh, you know, uh, how the rest of the world, you know, uses it. That makes sense. That totally, that totally makes sense. Okay, so let's talk about, uh, let's talk about season two a bit. Uh, for starters, uh, Joel, you still there? Yeah, I'm in. <laughs> yeah, I want to, I want to know, how did he... <laughs> yeah, I, cause, yeah, because I feel bad, because I feel like we're not giving her, like, an, enough chances to, like, Chime in, you know. I'm, but... I'm just, I'm just <laughs> <being honest. laughs> She's listening. She's listening and she cares. All right, but yeah, anyway, uh, so how did you get involved with the project? So I had moved to Philly after I graduated from college. I basically moved back home and then decided I needed to move out of my parents' house as soon as possible <laughs> and picked the closest city, which was Philly. And I started getting involved at Philly Improv Theater, and I worked at a place called The Actor Studio for a few months before I got fired, as I do for most jobs. Uh, <laughs> that happens. Uh, Been there, done that. I met, there was a guy there named Steve Gandolfo who was making, like, short films, and the cinematographer he was using was our very own jason taylor who does all the dp stuff on or or a lot of the dp stuff on welcome to anadonia so i was doing some short films with them and simultaneously doing things through philly improv theater where paul is involved and the story has been told to me uh actually i you know what? I, I'll turn it over to Kevin for this. Cause no, Kevin I think you should tell the story, really. Okay, well, okay. So the story, as it's been told to me, is they were, Kevin and Paul were drawing up the plans for season two and talking about this character, XCAV, and Kevin had seen some of J uh, Steve's films that Jason had shot, 
And Kevin was like, oh, I have someone actually in mind for this role. And Paul, who I didn't really know, I had maybe seen him passing twice, who I, I knew who he was because he ran this very cool show called TV Party back in the day at Fit. Um, and Paul was saying, oh, actually, I I have someone in mind, too, that I've been thinking of who I don't really know. And Kevin was like, okay, well, who do you have in mind? And it turns out they were both thinking of me in separate context, <laughs> which is very creepy, but also cool. <laughs> <laughs> That's... That's so sweet. What can you what can you tell us about XCAV? Uh, you know, as the character. Yes. So. Wait one second. Why is that creepy? We <laughs> thought you were talented. Yeah. What do creeps think I'm talented? Yeah. How dare you guys? <laughs> Paul came up to me one day after an improv rehearsal. Uh, I mean, and Paul, not to not to inflate his ego. But Paul was like a cool guy. Like Paul's like a cool guy around fit, and I knew who he was. I assumed he had no idea who I was because it's like this weird community that's kind of like high school. And he came up to me one day after an improv practice. I was like, "Okay, this is this is gonna sound weird, but uh, this is my Paul impression. Uh, we've been working on something, and we thought you know you'd be a really good fit for it. So just, just want to see if you're like you're interested." And, uh, yeah. That's a pretty good meme. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah that's why I, I don't. I, I do remember I was walking in for uh, a rehearsal of something else, and you were leaving for an improv rehearsal. And Kevin and I had talked to you. We we went to, like maybe even that day, had been at Bonner's talking through the script, and I yeah. went for a rehearsal, and you were there, and I was like, "Hey, girl, I don't know, but I've seen around. I'm gonna be a creep." <laughs> and uh, yeah, that is a little creepy. <laughs> That was okay. awesome because it, I was, you know, like just start kind of starting out in comedy and to kind of be on the minds of people who, you know, had had this part for me and like to get involved in that community so early was really exciting and very fortunate for me because I still work with all of you today on not just Antonia but on other things as well. So. And, and, and like and like you know to be let me let me advocate for a second for being a creep right so um <laughs> yeah. that's that, perfect perfect way to start it uh, off you know meet, meeting anybody that I've uh uh worked with long term and still enjoy working with it's like sort of starts in a creepy place where it's like hey you there male or female you uh, <laughs> both uh, you have a good look and you're talented i'd like to co-op your skills and <laughs> How it begins, right? So, sure, um, sure. if I met you, it's how I met Dan Corkery for the first time. It's how I met Rob Banowitz for the first time, and everybody that I've ever, you know, that I'm still, you know, close friends with now, I've met because I'm like, oh, that person stood out to me. My eye was drawn to them. I I saw a spark or a, something special in them, and I am going to not wait but seek them out. Um, yep. that is creepy, but also. Uh, I'm just now. kidding. It, it wasn't creepy. No, it, it is. It is creepy. It, it is creepy. <laughs> <laughs> How else do you make friends, though? You don't just like hide in a, under a rock and be like, "I, I hope don't. someone like Can hears my thoughts." Yeah. <laughs> I don't make friends. You wait for those DMs, guys. You wait. Wait, for hold on, <laughs> guys. How do you make friends? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's simple. It's simple. All you do is just go up to them and say, "Hey, you're a person. <laughs> Let's be friends." Yeah. yeah. Right. And then after the pepper spray That's wears off, more or less. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> and it can it can either go two ways. They say yes, or they kick your ass. Oh man, so. I don't like. <laughs> right. And after the group, like you guys are friends for life. <laughs> <laughs> but Jolie, Jolie, what was your initial reaction when Paul asked you to do the thing? Because I, I don't know if I've I was. This. I mean, I was excited because at that point, and still, I just kind of like Jeff. It's like someone asks you to be in something, and it's like, oh, that sounds interesting. That sounds cool. I'm looking for projects. I'm looking to, you know, get myself out there a little more and no i was excited and i just like kind of waited to to hear from you guys so i guess i'm curious because i've I've never asked you this paul asked you to join it asked mm -hmm. you to act in it and then 
I'm assuming he told you that there, like it existed online in another form. Yeah, so I must have. I know I look. I remember looking up the pilot, on uh, which you guys, it's you guys all complain about the pilot. Uh, we don't what complain about the pilot. Uh, no. <laughs> only Kevin complains about the pilot. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, only I. I, I, I watched the pilot, and I. I think I have a little hilarious. bit. And I thought it was great. And so whenever you guys, well, that's the thing. So Paul tells me about this. I look it up, and I watch the pilot at work. And I thought it was so good, and that it still like astounds me when you guys, when Kevin <laughs> trashes anything that happened on there, because that was definitely like the selling point for me. The pilot? Yeah. <laughs> I'm not complaining, but that. <laughs> yeah. yeah so no, come cool. on, no, come on. The pilot, the pilot is funny. It's super cool. Good. I'm glad. Funny. I'm and glad it's people like, think it's funny. I mean, it's a it's a full length pilot, and to just accomplish that on its own, like in Philadelphia, you know, and have it come out decent, but this is like beyond decent, was cool. That's it's it's not done very often. Yeah. yeah, exactly. What what she said basically, like you know, like it actually it actually does come off as something you know that a lot of time was put into. Like it's actually like a good pilot for something on like adult swim for example mm -hmm. you know so it's thank you tyler it's good like, you know what, uh, never never underestimate yourself you know what, it was my favorite part of the pilot i haven't watched it in years at this point but my favorite part of the pilot is the clown pet that's so funny <laughs> i was just about to say that too. Oh, the and uh and there's the rodney anonymous cameo too which we're gonna get which i'm gonna oh, yeah. ask about later too wait paul do you want to talk about that that girl who played the clown <laughs> uh, daughter? It was the makeup person's daughter who did it, right? It was um the or, or neighbor um, or something like that. The oh. uh, the woman who Teresa, Teresa who helped Teresa Morris, she it was got, fantastic. Uh, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. She helped with the costumes. She costumed some of the puppets for us. It was her niece, I think. And she, this girl. Couldn't have cared less about being there. <laughs> yeah, but that was perfect for the part. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There was yeah, it was no acting in there whatsoever. Yeah. <laughs> I don't even I don't even think the, 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 the pet clown had any any lines in the show, did it? No. no. Neither, neither, oh god. Neither the young pet clown that gets killed or the old <laughs> pet clown that replaces it, which is Jeff's dad. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> um neither <laughs> Wait, Jeff's clown. like Jeff's real life yep. dad? Jeff's real life dad, just... yeah. Oh my god! Yeah, his real life dad. <laughs> I have to go let the dog uh, out on the patio. I'll be back. Okay. All right. <laughs> okay. Bye, Paul. Was, uh, you know, I, I mean, and we found both these people much in the same way. It was like we need a seven-year-old, and we need an old man. I he I think he just came to set every day. <laughs> yeah. And was like, whatever you need. And they were and they were like, we'll put this on. And he's like, oh, I'm in the show now. It's like, oh, okay. <laughs> and just don't say anything. Uh, yeah, and that's, a lot of it was that way. It was like, oh, who's around? It's like, put the grip in makeup. Put Paul in makeup in two different <laughs> Um, So I'm in two different, I think, two different scenes in that. One is the tailor for, the, uh, for Mr. Connector's hit, and one I'm a clown in the clown. In, in, the, in the clown pound. Um, but I was also, uh, to your point, Tyler, like very excited to work with uh, Rodney Anonymous, who I've been, you know, I've been a dead month with since I was like 12 years old. So, um a chance to, you know, be in uh, a movie with Rodney Anonymous was was huge for me. Uh, <laughs> totally. Yeah, how did you, you guys get him involved? What's that? How did you guys get Same him involved? Same way all of us got involved. We just asked him. Oh, right. <laughs> Kevin, how did, how did Rodney Anonymous become involved with this? I just asked him to do it. I sent him an email. It's not, it's, it, Can that's you make it. more inspiring, please? <laughs> <laughs> That's what this podcast is about. Can we get it together? Uh, yeah, I uh, <clears throat> I was saving these nuns from this drowning ship, and uh, he just saw it. <laughs> and he was like, wow, I'll do anything you want. And I was like, I make a puppet show! <laughs> uh, kind of like, I have the power. It was my I have the power moment. Um, and oh, He lives like, in Philly, and he's a cool guy. And yeah. it was literally like, it was, sounds great. <laughs> I wrote him, I, well, actually, it's funny. I wrote him an email and I said, hey, uh, you know, I make this. I'm, well, my friends and I are making this uh, show. We love you. <laughs> I don't think we said, I don't think I said we love you. Uh, I think the whole time I was writing the email, I was like, don't write I love you. Don't write I love you. Don't write I love you. But um, we were, we're all big dead. <laughs> I, big fan. I love you, Kevin. 
I like yeah. it. Yeah. See you in the fall. <laughs> Love, Kevin. Um, <laughs> have a great yeah. summer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I wrote him, you know, telling him what the show was, telling him that, like, we were all big Dead Milton fans. And he wrote back saying, hey, this sounds great. Um, are you sure you don't want Joe? <laughs> and he's like, uh, the email was like, because I get a lot of emails from people thinking that I'm Joe. And he clarified by saying, Joe sang Punk Rock Girl. I sang Stuart. Um, Stuart, yeah. yeah. And I wrote back saying, no, we mean you. We know who you are. And then he just said, yeah, sure, great. Give me a time and place. And he showed up. He was awesome. He was super fantastic and funny. He told a bunch of um, uh, circus jokes, I think. <laughs> Oh, God. He that actually, I mean, he, what was great about him is that he was like uh, bringing stuff to it. I mean, he, I mean, he's a professional performer, so, you know, th there was no worries about that. But he he was just like, you know, can I do this? I think I'm going to try this. Like, it was he just... was so into it and jumped right into the world. And he fit right in to the point where a after that, Paul and I were like, all right, he's we're going to try to get him to come be a part of this every time we do it. And so far he has because uh, he's really cool. <laughs> Does he show up in season two? Oh, yeah. He's all over season two. Yeah. Oh, perfect. Yeah. And speaking and speaking of season two, you guys have another guest star on the show, Trace Bully from MST3K. Yes. Yeah. He, uh, what was it like working with him? Paul. It was, it was great. Trace uh, was yeah. really... Trace was uh, a delight. I mean, we yeah. sent him a script and, you know, uh, dialed into him and, you know, directed him doing... Uh, you know, spoiler alert, uh, uh, he, uh, he only, you know, gives the voice to a character, and then we, we, we pre-recorded, and then they performed to his voice. Um, but, you know, man, that guy was like, it was like, uh, it didn't feel like he was, like, doing us a favor. It felt like he was doing a real job, which was really cool. And, like, he really cared oh, about, yeah. like, listened to our performance notes and, like, took direction on stuff and, like, br again, brought a lot of stuff to it. Like, oh, what if I do it this way? What if I try it this way? Oh, I feel like... I'm getting this character. He would do it in this way, and and um, yeah, you know, gave us a bunch of stuff to work with, and it was great. I mean, it was a really. I remember the experience. It was like what, like an hour and a half, Kevin, that we spent with him. Yeah, it, we went to your office. It was it was about an hour and a half, two hours, and he was just like he, you know, he he was just really funny and sweet and thoughtful and gracious with his time and his talent. It was really really cool. Well, it, it's it's one of those things. Where it was like um, you know, we we think of him as a. Uh, um, you know, a, a personality, right? Like a talent. But yeah, uh, yeah. You, we got to say, like, he's just a like a dude. He's a humble dude like the rest of us who's, like, doing a thing and yeah. um, was just very, like, just personable and kind to us. And, like, it felt – it was humbling for me um, to have someone just be on the level with me and not, you know, not game – you know, big up me or game me or be, like, a big deal. But just be, He was just a cool dude. It was great. Yeah, that's why we have Jeff, so that he can be a big deal. Yeah, he's a big deal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And that's, the, and that's the cool thing, too, because you have, you have working with you, like a guy who has been a part of, like, this cult classic TV show for, like, 30-plus years, and you, like, you would probably assume, like, the worst out of him. Like, you'd probably <laughs> assume that, you know, he's probably some jackass who think he's better than everybody just because he was on some show. But, no, he's a great dude. Like, I can't say... I can't say that personally because I've never interacted with them, but you know, I've heard I've heard a lot of good stories, which is which is great. And this is another good one, so I'm very I'm very happy that I'm very curious to see how he play how he plays into the into season. Two. I was it's it's really cool. <laughs> it's, it's, oh, it's a big reveal, Tyler. You get yeah. you better buckle up. Yeah, yeah. All right, I am buckled up metaphorically, so it's gonna knock your socks off. <laughs> yeah, just so you know that th those are not uh, those are not a seatbelt; those are headphones. <laughs> Same thing. And Kevin, I, I should say I'm not wearing socks right now, but the skin is starting to come off on my feet, so I should probably check you that out. Go to... <laughs> doctor not getting. But <laughs> you might be a, right, a and... leper. <laughs> <laughs> Yay! Finally. Finally. Right, finally. Yeah. <laughs> you made it. <laughs> Woo! Finally. All right, sweet. So back to uh, back to Jolie for a second. Part of uh, part of what your character, part of involving your character is that you go, you've you've undergone uh, a, a transformation <laughs> process with makeup. Oh yeah. You could say. So what's it? What was that like? You know, going under under all this makeup and everything. Wow. Um, 
Yeah, so that makeup process, I think by the end, we, for the live show, we can do it in less time because it doesn't have to be as precise as when we're doing it um, for the screen. But the actual makeup process took, the first day we ever did it, it took three and a half hours. We got it down to about two and a half, I think, by the end of filming. Um, it wasn't fun. Oh, God. <laughs> but well, <laughs> I'll say that the, the hardest part, well, first of all, the, the worst part about the whole thing is just taking it off. Like that, I think, is the hardest part is because I will just be like dyed blue for days, especially when we were filming it. It was like in the middle of summer. <laughs> there was this one day where we were filming in uh, a place called Woodshop Studios. And it's sort of the, the best way I can describe Woodshop is that it's like a dank college basement. <laughs> like, <laughs> you know, it is the aesthetic, that's the smell, that's the vibe. Perfect. Um, and that was like my last day of shooting in makeup. And it was so hot. And I think what happened was my pores opened up. And so I was sweating the blue makeup, but then because my pores had opened, it was like getting oh, no. into my skin. So for the next oh, no. day, three or four days, I was tinted blue. <laughs> oh. Well, that was, was just like, Jesus. Was that the day where we were story. shooting until three? <laughs> was that the day where we were shooting until three in the morning in the basement? Yeah. Because everyone went to see the Weird Al concert, and we, yes, 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 and we had to, stay. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah. And Paul was... got, we thought we'd be done shooting. Paul got back like from the concert and continued shooting yeah. with us. <laughs> Paul, um, <laughs> yeah. uh, Paul left. Uh, yeah, Paul. Paul is uh, just oh, he's here. What's up? Here. What's up? <laughs> oh, we're just, uh, we just wanted to know how that uh, Weird Al concert was. <laughs> oh, the one at the man? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Which one? Wait, 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 wait. We should clarify that you can't just say that Weird Al concert. Yeah. Because Paul has seen Weird Al upwards of, what, 45 times? No, no, not that much. Oh it'll, it'll be my 30-second oh, really? my thirty second Weird Al show in July. Wow. <laughs> so I'm going to go see him at the Met doing the, no, uh, the Strings Attached tour uh, on in July, on July 14th. So my oh, my God. That sounds Are awesome. Are you going to be in New York? Uh, yeah. Oh, thanks. Okay. Oh, perfect, perfect, I'm not going to New York. I did see him on the last tour uh, in Harlem at the Apollo. Uh, um, so that was working my way back math wise. What does that put me? It was so four ago would have been what? So that would have been when I, 28th. when you guys were seeing at Woodshop, my 28th. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I actually think I might have seen it one one time in between because I think the, when we were sh when you were shooting at Woodshop, I left because it was my twenty seventh Weird Al show, which is a, a significant number in Weird Al uh, world. More, <laughs> uh, more, yeah. So um, me and uh, I had tickets for for forever, and it was right on my birthday. So I was my wife was bringing me for my birthday. Michael and Mark were going too. We all left to go see Weird Al, and it was great. It was great. It was the um, it was the Alpocalypse tour. Oh, perfect. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, yeah, so that... So, yeah, so, so they bailed on us to go uh, see Weird Al. <laughs> yeah. Not... Like any, like any same person would. We don't expect to shoot for 18 <laughs> hours. <laughs> <laughs> uh, how hard could puppets be? I mean, geez. <laughs> no, but I like, yeah, Jolie's face was melting off of her face at that point. That was... That was, I, like, yeah. Jolie yeah. is an amazing Multi Raiders. It was like Raiders. Yeah. <laughs> well, not to mention that, like Jolie, you also had like, didn't you have an allergic reaction to the latex? Yeah. At a certain point, I uh, let me be clear. I do not have a latex allergy. I do use condoms. Uh, but... <laughs> there are not okay. Yeah. But like, but like, <laughs> but like, as headwear, right? Well, <laughs> yeah, it's fancy hats. My skin is, I have sensitive skin. And um, <laughs> yeah, by like day two of putting on the makeup, they were doing my scars with latex to like raise them up and then painting over them. But by day two or three, my skin was just rejecting it. 
<laughs> like, <laughs> it was like now. And right, Tyler. So you wouldn't know from looking at her now, but Jolie is covered in scars. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Um, she is literally oh, poor a mess of scars. Just a mess. Of scars. Yeah, I'm one. I'm one giant scar. That's what my Tinder profile says. Just one. Yeah. Scar. Isn't that a Billy Joel song? I'm one giant scar. <laughs> <laughs> No, no, that's a Randy. Uh, okay. thing. But watch out, Tony will throw your lion dad off of the mountain. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, so I was—I ha- forgot about that. Um, I, yeah, so I was having like some. Issues I didn't with that. because I was terrified. <laughs> <laughs> and then the other, honestly, the biggest issue was just I used to have very long curly hair. Um, it used to be like down to my mid back or so this like big frizzy mane and we would uh, hairspray my hair and to get all the hairspray out was just me in the shower afterwards just like crying like (laughs) like with conditioner (laughs) and a comb. Uh, I no longer have long hair like that because I was just like over feeling that just was like the straw that broke the camel's back now she cries in the shower without the conditioner oh yeah i know this is like this is like a very visual thing but like at the end of the day and i know this is a podcast but uh, at the end of the day you'd walk into the green room and you just see jolie there like half blue you know like someone's like taking her makeup off and the the hair and makeup artist was like ripping the, <laughs> the, the, yeah. the 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 stuff out of her hair and Jolie was just like ow ow <laughs> ow I will say I always felt like uh, I always felt like like a lion cub like I just had like three <laughs> women around me just like hosing me down and like getting my hair undone I felt it felt very primal <laughs> uh, do you uh do you ever have nightmares <laughs> Um, I mean, constantly, but not about that. <laughs> <laughs> we could go there. Same. But, it's like they're all like, like, I think Miss Jolie is beautiful, talented, and interesting. Why well, think she's more interesting than she is beautiful or talented? Why <laughs> well, think she's more <laughs> talented than, than less so beautiful or interesting, but also very much those things? Can we get in an argument about it? As <laughs> And then Jolie wakes up. Uh, she's like, I just can't go to work today. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But I will say, despite it all, despite the pain, that was like one of the best weeks of my life. Like it was just. Oh it yeah. Was so funny. Um, and I wouldn't. Maybe I would just like be smart and cut my hair ahead of time, and that's what I would change. But otherwise, <laughs> would not change a thing. That was one of the best weeks. Like second only to Coachella. no that was oh i'm sorry go on oh yeah dragon con right yeah i i i i can't believe that was four years ago i know that was i i still think of that as like as one of the best weeks of my life as well especially the fact that we all became friends kind of it 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 was two and a half weeks it was not one week the whole thing was two and a half weeks and also I'm like, when I think of it being four or five years ago, I'm amazed that I've, I haven't known Jolie longer. Like the yeah. fact that we met each other before that happened, I feel like oh, I've yeah. been a lot longer than that. But yeah, it's, it's yeah, I know my what you mean. brain is only compressed into the things that I remember or want to remember and all of the other <laughs> stuff. That so it's like, it's amazing because like, I feel like I know you really well and we're really close friends, but I've mm-hmm. not known you as long as. I've known shitty people I work with, for instance. <laughs> Name <laughs> names, Paul. <laughs> I, I won't, even though they're probably not listening to this podcast. <laughs> Ruin careers. But that I think that's like one of the, the important things to highlight about this project is like it is it's such a it sounds lame and kitschy and whatever, but it's like we're we're like a family. It's you know, oh, and totally. we fight like a family does. And we, uh, you know, we, especially in the past year, we've started occasionally doing this live show. So we're all kind of traveling more together. And we, you know, we went to Dragon Con down in Atlanta and we went to Chicago Sketch Fest. And um, it's just like, uh, it just brought so many fun things and opportunities that we would not have 
done otherwise and like it's they're all my favorite people to be with and work with and I am happy that they have included me. We're oh, lucky perfect. to have you involved. <laughs> We're lucky to have each other. This has been yeah, one of the best experiences of my life as well. Don't worry about fame. Don't worry about fortune. Don't worry about art or high shit. Fun shit is cool. That's all there is, right? <laughs> yeah. Paul, Paul famously funny things said, are fun. Um, yeah, art is bullshit. Funny things are fun. And we every time we do something that we now... Uh, we now uh, uh, use those words as kind of a battle cry. It's well, it's it's. I mean, like as much as uh, you guys make fun of me for saying it, I it's true. That, it's true. Yeah. I don't think <laughs> we don't make fun of you for saying it. We love that you said it. It's, it's like found. <laughs> like, yo, look at this beautiful thing I made. I'm like, fuck your beautiful thing, man. Give me something. We cool. were we were all at, we were at Dragon Con, and it was like the biggest puppet slam in America. <laughs> we we didn't have a script but we said we did and we were going we were one of the last to go on and as uh, things were going every like people were just getting more and more despondent that like we didn't plan shit we don't know what we're doing Look at these people <laughs> these people have spent like their lives creating these masterpieces these art like you know this like beautiful thing that says so much about the human experience and i was freaking out because i was like i let everybody here and and i lied i don't have a script and we're going to go up there and we're all going to make fool of us of ourselves. And Paul was like, Kevin. Paul could barely stand up at this point. He said, Kevin. <laughs> I was going to say, Paul was... Uh, yeah, Paul was... Art is bullshit. Funny things are fun. <laughs> and then... Oh, and, shit, we broke And then we, we, all, we all put our hands in the middle and we yelled... <laughs> we, we yelled something. And we went up and we fucking... <laughs> it killed. We and that's it the, that's the fucked up part about it is that <laughs> yeah, uh, it was know. like... 1500 people and you know people were uh, other groups were going up there and people were applauding politely and like oh yes yes very good puppetry and we went on there and we're like ah what's going on yeah <laughs> and like made it up as we went more or less and it was it was great because it was just received so well uh amongst people who right. uh you know do this you know, professionally, <laughs> you know, I, I, we're, we're professional in our attitude, but we're also kind of like, not that night. Nah, yeah, not that night. <laughs> not that night. I think I found out like an hour beforehand that we were supposed to do it. And I was like, I shouldn't go on stage. I was playing ultimate werewolf and got a text <laughs> saying like, you know, we're going on stage in 25 minutes. I was like, all right. <laughs> And then Kevin literally described it like up to the minute before we went on stage. Kevin was like, and then you're going to do this. And we're like, yep, yep. Wait, and wait, it, wait, and wait. It... let me be clear. Kevin explained it and Jeff went, yep, yep, and didn't actually listen to any of it. And I actually what? <laughs> didn't listen to any of it. Oh, yeah, Jeff, you did not listen to my instructions, but that's okay. <laughs> it still I, was no, funny. You it couldn't hear me. <laughs> Kevin gave me one job to do, and I did it, and no one listened to me. <laughs> I was supposed to time the show, and I had the stopwatch, and I was just, like, coming up behind you going, like, three minutes, and you're like, hey, come on up here! You know? <laughs> and then when they asked me what it, like, for, like, like I, was, I got my one cue for the entire, like, five minutes we were supposed to do, and I said, the end. And it, like, 1,500 people, like, like, roared in laughter, and we were like, all right. They carried us out on their shoulders. Yeah, <laughs> more or less. <laughs> yeah, they, they gave us the key to the city after did that. Did anybody film amazing. that? Because I thought I, I would love to see what the hell we did. <laughs> okay. So, okay. So for those who aren't, so for those who aren't watching right now, because um, this is going to be sound later on, Paul is doing some intense. <laughs> oh yeah, Paul's yeah. yeah, Paul's a, Paul's a really talented this puppeteer. Is... <laughs> I was playing. Sorry, I, I got bored. Wait, <laughs> I, I would like to say something real quick that we haven't really talked about. Everybody, nobody does like one job on this show. Like everybody does oh, like yeah. ten different jobs. So Jolie stars as XCAV, but she also writes with us and she also helps like produce. Jeff does one job; he just acts. Paul does. No, I like help. <laughs> no, stuff like that. No, Jeff, <laughs> Jeff does. Jeff helps write. Jeff. Jeff performs. Jeff is like very involved in the production of the show. <laughs> Paul's shaking his head no. Um, uh, not really. <laughs> <laughs> Paul writes and directs and performs. He edits. He does like After Effects. You know, he does 
pretty he, he's pretty, <laughs> pretty much puts the whole show entire show together um and it's the same thing like we uh, our friend josh who does the music he doesn't just do the music he also like you know, he writes the songs he likes that he's the head of the animation department he does after effects stuff he does, he helps Kevin, edit what why don't you call josh right now and just get him on the phone don't tell him we're all on the phone okay yeah hold on I'll, I'll, uh, yeah i'll call all right um, he does then, well he does all the sound really I mean, going josh is like our is our boom fun. guy and everything Wait, Tyler, is that okay are you allowed oh yeah i told him it was yeah. fine in the email or whatever yeah. and you know and you know who else we should try to get on here uh cameron who Cam- <laughs> cameron <laughs> Ramey. <laughs> who oh cameron cameron Ramey. yeah yeah, he helped out for a few days on the um, on the uh, in the art department. Hey, Josh, how you? Yeah, Josh, how you him. doing? Good, how are you? I'm doing well. Hold on one second. Would you do me a favor? What's up? Would you tell me what it's like to work with me? <laughs> <laughs> You're talking to me and Paul and Jolie and Jeff and Tyler. Hi. <laughs> We're, we're all at our own places, but we're talking on a podcast about Welcome to Anadonia. Remember that show we did, Welcome to Anadonia? <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm building a, uh, I'm rebuilding the mansion right now. Wow. Yeah, Paul, Josh sent me a picture earlier. He's redoing the stop motion scene right now. Um, oh, really? Yeah, yeah. But, but Josh, mean, oh, go on, Josh. Uh, what's it like to work with you guys? What was what was your experience on Welcome to Anadonia? I mean, uh, you know, it's so complicated. <laughs> it's, it's, not, it's not like working. I'll tell you that. Um, uh, and it took me a long time to figure that out. I think that's the crux of it right there. Is that if you think that you're working on Anadonia, then you're wrong. You're there and you're participating in it, but nobody's working on it. <laughs> and it it's okay. more like religion where you like pay tribute and then like, you know, you just have faith that it matters. <laughs> but it's not like a job where you're like, you do this and then this happens. And then you do that, and then that. Like there's no logic or reason behind it. You just it's just God. <laughs> that's a that's a great way to put, thank you, Josh. Yeah. <laughs> Josh not only does the music, he he's the head of the animation department. He does a lot of the uh, editing and uh, special effects, and he also acts in it. He's a he's a rock and roll bot. All right. And I was just watching that episode this morning too. Wait, what's so. that? What's that, Josh? I should probably be on this show, whatever it is. Yeah, there's whatever it is. Yeah. <laughs> well, we can send. Well, we can send you the episode once it's done. Yeah. Oh, thank. This is the. Uh, Josh, this is Josh, the. Oh, you're 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 on it right now, man. Yeah. Oh, no. Yeah, you're you're being recorded. Is there anything you want to say about you know like your experience doing special effects for the show? Yeah, it's hard. It takes a long time. <laughs> uh, is kent with you no nah, nobody knows where he is okay kent is uh is uh kent is kent borsma is also an artist who works on the show uh he he plays three different characters in it he's uh basic he's like josh would you say he's your assistant animator he, he animates with you uh no he's the lead animator okay um uh i've i've done a lot of uh I'm I'm basically in charge of him and whoever else animates and uh, and making sure that the the shots are set up that the equipment works that they're if it's stop motion that it's lit correctly that we're we're following the boards correctly and that they're going to fit into the edit and finally polishing it up but functionally what Kent brings is he will he builds the puppets and then he brings them to life by animating them. Um, yeah. He'll, he just, you know, the way most people do it is they, they sit there with a uh, a computer screen and a couple of monitors and like an assistant and uh, a cinematographer and uh, and then they, they move each of the, the limbs piece by piece. Like one of the puppets he made had like, I don't know, but technically it had um, a tail, eight legs, and then 
six tendrils for its head. So you do the math. I can't do that math. <laughs> Too much addition. So then uh, it, he'll just, but instead of, of having all of that at his disposal, I just set up the shot, turn on the lights, and then he smokes a bunch of weed and, <laughs> and just like does it freehand. Animation freehand. Yeah. And it looks beautiful. That, yeah, and that, that is not an easy thing to do. No. Yeah. Kent and Josh are two incredibly talented people, and you know we're very lucky that they've become such a big part of the project as well. It's like, it's just a great way to make stuff with your friends and watch Kent get high. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Perfect. yeah. Because we we love to watch Kent get high, you know. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's what it's all about. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Sure. Thank you, thank you so much, Josh. All right, smell you later. Smell you. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. So... Um, yeah. Uh, there's also Michael Latini, Mark Petrosino from Monkey Boys Productions. There's Michelle Yeager, who's the costume artist. She's she she like she she's this amazing artist. She every couple of years there's this big uh, uh, design contest in New Zealand. Designers from all over the world will they'll they'll be these prompts. So like one year it was like, you know, like bugs or something, and you design costumes based around the prompts. And people from all over the world submit. And every time Michelle submits, she gets accepted. And I think she won like second prize one year or something. And it, her search her work is beautiful. She's an amazing person. That's awesome. Yeah. Do you want to do you want to call her up as well? She won't answer. <laughs> oh. <laughs> God, that sucks. I'll give, I'll give it a try. I'll give it a try, but yeah. Um, Worth a yeah. shot. Um, well, so I, I, I think that if we're going to call somebody right now, um, we should call Latini because he's also Artie. Oh, yeah. Oh, you know, yeah, Artie. It would be good to get Latini on the phone and just like talk to him about puppet shit for a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> oh, he answered Michael. <laughs> Hi, what are you doing? I'm sitting in my house. What are you doing? I'm just hanging. I'm at the studio. Oh, yeah? Yeah. What's going on at your house? You know, there's kids here, and I watch <laughs> them on the weekends. <laughs> you mean you, you, you are their dad? Yeah, you know, dad stuff. Oh, okay. Um, I'm actually with Paul and Jeff and our friend Tyler, who's interviewing us. Uh, we're on a po his podcast. Oh, cool. Talking about what? Hello. Okay. How's it going? Welcome. Hey. Um, and uh, we wanted uh, to get you on the phone because you're you're Artie, aren't you? You know, part of me is Artie. Part 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 of you is Artie. <laughs> well, not only that, but Michael's also a producer, and he's built a lot of the puppets as well. That's correct. Yeah. Yeah. Um, how did we meet, Michael? How did we meet? Yeah. Uh, Craigslist. That's right. right? Yeah, oh. you you followed me. You 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 stalked okay. on Craigslist. Yeah, that was it. No, yeah. you posted on Craigslist that you were looking help for puppet stuff. We we were desperate back then. So like, I knew it now. That hey, we're puppet people. We might be able to help you. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Tyler, for yeah. your reference, Michael is just a puppet. He's not a real man. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, uh, why would you have to spoil the illusion? <laughs> There was a wait. So is he? Wait. So does he actually look like Artie? Is he playing himself? Yeah, kind of. Yeah, he, <laughs> he does look like Artie. Now that we talk about, it. he's just a he's just a small yellow puppet. Striped arms, furry body. <laughs> Basically, yeah. yeah. No teeth. No is teeth it, at all. No he's teeth. a little jaundiced. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Works. It worked out in in your favor in the long run. So. Hey, hey, Michael, uh, uh, it's Paul. Hello. Hey, Paul. How are you? Good, how are you? So good to hear from you. Good to hear from you as well. Uh, hey, can you tell us a little bit about Monkey Boys and how Monkey Boys started? Yes. Very so, good question. Monkey Boys, as Kevin may have already said, or maybe not, uh, we call ourselves a multimedia production company, so... Uh, I didn't say that. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, uh, you know, we produce... Uh, design, uh, create puppets, props, practical effects, creatures, and costumes. We started... Hey, look, there's my youngest son asking me if you can watch TV. Aww. We have another special guest with us. Not yet. 
This is what happens when you call me out of the blue. I have to answer questions of my children. <laughs> um, but back to Monkey Boys. Uh, yeah, we do stuff. We started as a puppet company in 2006. 2000. 2000. I almost said 20. Um, <laughs> yeah, we started as a company in 2006. And then in uh, 20... Gosh, what is it? It's 2019. So I think it was like 20, 2014, 2015. Uh, our puppets got rented uh, by... Little Shop Puppets. And they got rented by Saturday Night Live. And that, that just started our relationship with them. Uh, built props and everything for them and made us realize that we should probably diversify. If we want. That was actually going to be one of my questions, was how did you guys get involved with SNL? What was that? That was actually going to be one of my questions, was how did you guys get involved with SNL? Because I'm always seeing your, your posts that you guys are doing props for them, and I love that. Yeah, it's pre- it's a crazy thing. We keep pinching ourselves every time we're there and every time we're working with them because it's pretty, um, even though it's a, a, a crazy you know, amount of time that you're doing stuff in, everyone is still pretty calm and, you know, generally really cool. So um, it's weird. You, you you forget very quickly after starting to work there how, uh, you know, what it is. But how did, but how did, how did the first engagement, I know the story of how you guys got hooked up with them, but Tyler doesn't. So how, how did that happen? Yeah, sure. So, uh, I had a and they were, they had a sketch written, that got cut ultimately uh, so that you can't see it anywhere but um <laughs> but the sketch uh the sketch was a little shop sketch and they needed puppets for it so we they rented our puppets we brought them up we puppeteered them uh, met a bunch of the designers on the different teams both on the scenic team and on the props team and the costumes team um and uh and then as as we finished up they all pretty much asked us like did you guys make these um, you know, do you make other things? Can you make things quickly? And of course, we just said yes to everything. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, and then they started calling us, and um, they called us a few times more that season than the next season. And then uh, this season was the first. Uh, the forty four forty fourth season was the first one. First one we did all their custom outside props. So that's pretty much anything that. Um, that can be that can't be bought somewhere else and is like some sort of weird thing like a five foot tall talking toilet or you know <laughs> uh what was the other thing frozen space monkeys you know oh god that sketch yeah i bought so many frozen space monkeys on amazon you don't, you don't even <laughs> yeah paul's got a frozen space, space monkey guy they, they weren't on amazon well they weren't when you I want a frozen space monkey. How how much would that cost, Michael? Are you gonna make Tyler a frozen space monkey? A frozen space monkey? Yeah. I don't know. We probably still have. We definitely still have the space monkey face. We have the mold. Oh yeah, we, yeah. Oh, sitting God. around. Yeah, shop. it's it's weird. Yeah. Yeah. I don't like it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't like it. Right I don't now. like the I'll baby macaw the that's yeah. here. I don't like a lot of things. Space Monkey Face Mold is my favorite Sebado album. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you, thank you, Michael. Yeah, no problem. Michael, wait, um, would you talk like Artie for a second for me? I don't know. Would you talk like Scram? It's much easier. I don't. <laughs> I uh, Scram's not here, so I don't know what we're gonna do about that. Scram's not there. Improvise. Would uh, it help if I talked like Jeff? But Jeff is there. Jeff, yeah, I'm here. <laughs> Artie, you talk together. Jeff, are you there? I'm here, Artie. What is it? Hey, Jeff. Wait, where's Graham? He's not here, Artie. What? Why not? I thought he was attached to your leg most of the time. He's in outer space. What? He's he's farming space monkeys. It's a long story. Space monkeys. <laughs> yes. What is he? He told me he would bring me to space next time he went. And I just don't understand. I thought he was my best friend. You thought he was your best friend? Yeah, yeah. Scram's my best friend. What about Harry? You guys sleep together. Bah! <laughs> <laughs> and scene! <laughs> no, 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 I was just going. And then Scram comes crashing through the, the ceiling with a frozen space monkey attached to him. <laughs> We're just giving these out of there! <laughs> <laughs> space monkey. 
<laughs> Guys, I think we just wrote season three. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, the, the space monkey that in season three, his name is Goop. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, season three, it's, just, it's, it's uh, the Andromeda strain and Welcome to Anadonia brought on by uh, Frozen Space Monkey. Nice. Yeah. As long as uh, someday uh, Artie gets turned into like a Godzilla-sized monster, and we get to make a full-body Artie suit, and he gets like, on the yeah. Suit. Oh my yeah. god! How have you guys not done that? That's yet? actually uh, something we did. That was like one of the. So when Paul and I were putting this season together, we had a bunch of things that just did not. What's that mean, Paul? I can't see it. Money, Tyler. <laughs> money. <laughs> <laughs> This is what GoFundMe is for, guys. That, uh, I was just saying. GoFundMe some money, Tyler. <laughs> <laughs> All right, look, look. Here's my wallet. Just take everything. No, we, we'll, take yeah, it. We, we, <laughs> yeah, take his money. Uh, we, grab it. Um, we've, we've been writing Welcome to Atlanta so long. But we now have about 10 seasons worth of material. Yeah. <laughs> I almost got it. You almost got it. Oh. But now go. we have an in at NBC, we could probably get it, you know, made. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, well, you guys enjoy the rest of your podcast. I have to go yell at my kids because they turned on the TV and I told them not. To. But yell at them like Artie, please. <laughs> Stop it! <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right, bye, Michael. See you, guys. Bye, everyone. Night, Mike. All right, bye, man. Nice talking to you. That's Michael. <laughs> Okay, that was perfect. <laughs> All right. <laughs> yeah, so let's talk a little bit more about uh about season two. So what can we expect from season two? A lot uh, of celebrity cameos. <laughs> well, that, yeah. A, a library in every county. County <laughs> in every state. And uh, a state in every home. Season two, um, it's so it's it's bigger it's not like in a not in a like um you know it's still a small scale indie show but we um expanded the ideas and uh we 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 always wanted it to be this kind of multimedia collage thing and um you know jeff <laughs> they they it, it, it's a it's a it's a it's basically one long story told over eight episodes each episode is about 10 minutes long um and we really get to expand the world of Anadonia. Like, um, we, we kind of go into the myth, myth of the world a little bit. We, we, we dive into a lot of the uh, characters' backgrounds and, you know, where they came from and all that stuff. Um, you know, we meet all these new <laughs> characters. Like, uh, like Ixiavi really is my, my favorite character now. Um, and that's in no small part to it's, it's mainly because of Jolie. Um, <laughs> Jolie's so much fun uh to have on set and to have like let her and jeff her scene we have this other actor justin hopkins who's a friend of mine from high school he came in and accented as well and the scenes between jeff jolie and justin are some of the funniest things i've ever seen uh, he's that's, fantastic oh yeah so that's that's the, i think people will, i i think people will really like that i think that's that's like the big thing to look for um yeah uh guys jolie jeff Paul, what, what do you what do you what do you like about season two? What do you think people will be into? Um, let's ask Andrew. Andrew, what will people like about season two? Andrew Coppola is here. Say hi. Hi, Andrew. Hi, Andrew. 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 Oh, hold on. Andrew, have you been sitting there the entire time? Andrew Coppola is um, in season one, and he's in the live show. Yeah. And if we Andrew make and we talk to him, what do you like about season two? The jokes. <laughs> he said the oh, jokes. Oh, good. Yeah, we heard him. As Andrew Coppola is wont to do. Hey, Andrew, what else do you like? What else do you like? Yeah, the puppets. The puppets, he said. <laughs> but, Andrew, why? <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Very what about good. Claim that Andrew is your boyfriend and not a five-year-old who's like, yeah. Wait, Andrew is also an improviser and a, a, a an actor, and he's a very talented actor. And um, 
Andrew, if, if, if given the choice between season two and an elf choir. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I, I'm not asking you. I'm asking Andrew. <laughs> well, excuse me. <laughs> I took a few seconds to think, and then he said, elf. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Andrew, here's a question for you. Do you like Jolie in season two? Yeah. That was, there was too much pause in that. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Bye, Andrew. It was good having you. Yeah. Bye, Bye Andrew. Andrew. <laughs> Andrew's cool. I like him. Jolie, let him know that his answer should have been, I like Jolie all the time. Oh. You blew it, Andrew. You oh, no. doesn't. Yeah, so uh, this season will never come out. We're going to keep working on it for <laughs> 10 more years. Oh. It will be done. It almost didn't. No. Really? No. I'm just, <laughs> just trying to fill in empty air. Uh, <laughs> uh, what I like about the show is uh, everything. It's bigger and more fantastic and more universal than season one. And it also erases everything that we established in the pilot and starts uh, fresh. It's a reboot. <laughs> yeah. We'll do the same thing next it's a re- it's um, yeah. a reboot. It's a reboot of a show that never got off the ground yet. Yeah. So, which is rare, which is, I like that. There was funny, nothing uh, wrong with the pilot. I, I P- didn't get to chime in in that conversation earlier, but I, I, I watched it very recently, like two months ago. And I laughed a lot. <laughs> yeah, same, like... I don't. I don't know why people are knocking the pilot because I thought it was very probably solid. just because I was freezing the whole time. <laughs> well, like, again, it's not people like me. I, I'm the only one who kind of like looks down on it. But I, I do. I, I, it's it, it's only because I'm so close to it because it's like the first thing we made, and I was so uh, embarrassed, like so uh, you know sh- shy about the whole process that I. I I the whole time we were making it, I kind of had to like step out and be like, this isn't my thing. Otherwise, I don't think I would have made it because I would have been too embarrassed. Yeah, and I, and also, uh, I want to chime in in all seriousness on this. I think that there's two things. The first is that all of us involved with it uh, suffered a bit doing it, right? So, like, yeah. it was freezing. It was hard. It was long. It was coming into our set being, you know, destroyed by people partying on it because it was a music venue at night. Um, that was really hard for us. Uh and then the, the other thing is like, I, Kevin, for you, I think that you always have a vision for what you want. And it's always more, it, to this point, has been more ambitious than we've been able to achieve with the money and resources we have. And so seeing it come together, it's, it, it, it does the job, but it's not quite what you had in mind. And I think that you still have pain about that. And that's part of the creator's curse. Part of the thing we learn with as we, you know, work together and grow and what makes season two or, well, you know, season one better, season two better, but we'll always be, you know, reaching toward a better thing. It's like, um, if you look at um, Guardians of the Galaxy versus Tromeo and Juliet, there's something that he wanted to do in tr- with Tromeo that he couldn't achieve until he had all the money and re- resources of the world. But yeah. Still doing that, probably learn something in making it. So yeah. like, you know, we'll always look back at what we did before and be disappointed, yet we get up, move forward, do new shit, right? So um, uh, we we can't ever look at it and be like, oh yeah, that was great. Like we even like showed in season two uh, at Philomoca as like a premiere to friends and family, we showed season one and everyone's like, oh, this is great. But we hate every scene, we hate every little piece of it. We hate every little mistake, every compromise we had to make is there for us to see and remember. So we'll always be reminded of that thing. So um, that's just the reality of doing shit. You just like, exactly. hate what you do, go to the next thing. You look that's at filmmaking. <laughs> Steven Spielberg yeah. hates Jaws. He hates Jaws, hates watching it, hates thinking about it. Because Jaws, to him, sucks. To everyone else, it's amazing, yeah. but to him, I just read, I mean, yeah. Finally, Woody Allen hates not Manhattan. so fondly of one, right? Oh, uh, the pilot. Right. We, we, yeah, I mean, go ahead. No, I was just—I was, I was going to say was that you know, you're very spot on in what you were just saying because you know it doesn't—it doesn't just apply to like you know film 
or TV or movies or, you know, just artwork or whatever. It, it happens to anyone in the creative process. That's just, that's just. Yeah. And, and this is something that, that Kevin and I talked about um, that I learned about uh, later than I should have. Um, we did uh, the pilot and I read about something called the creator's curse, right? So um, whenever you do anything, you learn something you did wrong that you would have done better. Whenever you see the thing that you did, you think about the thing you would have done better. So whenever you look back at anything, you'll never look back at fondly. And uh, you'll always think about what you could have done in a different way. And no matter what you do, as long as you're progressing and doing other work, you're gonna learn shit you fucked up, right? You're gonna keep exactly, up until yeah. you die and <laughs> get, get used to it, everybody, because that's what we are. <laughs> and if we're good enough and like not just like complacent idiots, we're gonna keep fucking up and you know, disappointing audiences and doing bomb shows, making videos that don't work. We're going to keep fucking up forever and just learning better. But like, we're all going to be there together and we'll build an affinity for each other and make our lives better by virtue of that. Yeah. The, uh, to, to, to think, yeah. <laughs> to, to add on to that, I will also say that like the funniest part of that is people will like talk about the things that they love the most. And I'm like, that's the dumbest thing. <laughs> you know, like, I hate that, but, or, or, you know, not hate, but I just like that. Yeah. Or people, like, I really liked, you know, someone, Paul once said that like someone watched it and they're like, it has a warmth. To it. And I was like, okay. <laughs> um, yeah. So it's, it's kind of fun. It's like, uh, you know, when you first hear your voice recorded and you're like, no, like I hate it. Um, and then the more you hear your voice recorded, you're kind of just like you accept that that's your horrible, terrible voice. The more we, yeah, yeah the more we do. The... <laughs> that's literally that's why I'm doing this podcast right now. So <laughs> to, to, yeah, to, to purge yourself of hating your voice. Yeah. Um, yeah. Kevin, you have to assume Frank Oz's dad was like, "Never speak again." <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, when I hear your, everyone's impression of me, I'm like, oh, man, I should not talk anymore. <laughs> um, hey, is Jolie still here? Can she do my me impression again? Oh, yeah. Uh, so here's this thing. Uh, and it's kind of crazy. Uh, that's my call. <laughs> Wait, Jolie, can you not do a Jeff impression? Uh, what's my Jeff impression? Let me think I'd love to hear this. <laughs> nah, I can't. Can you do one of me? Um, I'm sorry to put you on the spot. Let me think. Let me think. Uh, which which Kevin Kelly? <laughs> <laughs> Kevin Kelly Instagram or Kevin Kelly as normal? Uh, e whichever is easier, I guess. <sighs> no, I can't. <laughs> I gotta be like telling a story. I have to like. Is it too embarrassing? No, I'm an actor. <laughs> And I need to like get into character. Oh. Like, telling a story for it. I just can't. I'm sorry, guys. My my. Sorry. Whenever I do an impression of you, Jolie, it's always as that uh, the character you play, the little girl who's running away from home. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Ke that's... Kevin, can you do an impression of me? Of you? Oh. Yeah. Well, uh... All right. Okay. I'll okay. take it. I was just, I was just, uh, yeah. Right. That's you. I, I have a Kevin, I have a Kevin impression. Ready? All right. Here we yeah. go. Okay. Paul. All right. Li buddy, listen. Okay. <laughs> I know what we're doing. Okay. I have a plan. We're going to do this. So look, look at this, right? We go here. And then, and my arms are moving over here, D to here, right? Then here, <laughs> and that's where we're gonna do it. I'll say it more, can we smoke a cigarette? <laughs> <laughs> me. Who you know? Yeah. Yeah, okay. all right, I'll, I'll try to, uh, um. So I've heard that there is a child in this house that needs some counseling. <laughs> Oh my God! I don't speak that slow. <laughs> <laughs> well, you do see—that's almost that's a Nixie Avi impression. Yeah. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs>
Uh, all right, I'll work in a Jolie impression for the next podcast. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Whenever, that was, that was whenever season three comes I'm out, sorry. I apologize. Years. Jolie, I would never disrespect you by trying to impersonate you. <laughs> <laughs> As I have you. <laughs> <laughs> but I consider that a sign of respect, is what I'm saying. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it means you think about him, which is an, a sweet thing. Yeah. True, and I don't give a Aww. shit about either of you. Oh, <laughs> my my heart. Aww. I'm cool with it. Just keep thinking about me. Yeah, that's my impression. Okay, so my impression of this is uh, Paul is is no one no, I'm cool. No, no. See, <laughs> I, well, I, no, I got we're going to do. <laughs> Chef. I just want to let you know that I'm cool with it either way. But if you don't, I'm sorry. <laughs> wait, really? like wait, 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 everybody! Oh. I have the. I have, I have this is my impression of Jeff. <laughs> my name is Jeff. My name is, my name is Tim Kelly. I directed a movie for everybody to see, but nobody likes it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. That's, <laughs> this is a lot here, like our here, rehearsal. Here's my impression of Jeff. Ready? Bait, 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 bait. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Fair enough. Brutal. Bait, 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 bait. You guys bait? <laughs> we did that. We we did an impression. We. <laughs> Michael was trying to order pizza one time, and then Kevin and I were like two feet away from him doing that voice, pretending that was a Michael impression. Just like, hey, can I have a large pizza and can you deliver it to my back door? Hey, guys, I would order a large pizza. <laughs> uh, uh, can, I, can I have a large pizza, please? There's like eight people here. We all want pizza. And you cut it into equal quarter size pizzas. <laughs> And, and, and can I have, can I have some extra anchovies on? There? Can you put another pizza on top of the pizza? <laughs> <laughs> it's a pizza sandwich. <laughs> that's a that's a calzone. No, it's on bold. Oh 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 oh. Okay, you're right. You're right. Get your shit. All right. Oh, all right. Can you, uh... <laughs> Oh, and, and can you can you wrap a can you wrap a pizza around around the pizza on top of a pizza? So that's the cheese steak. <laughs> no, pizza, it's good. That's the way we draw the line. We can't wrap a pizza with pizza. It's too much. This is too much of pizza. <laughs> listen, Honey. listen. I'm not. I'm, I'm not telling you how to. I'm not trying to tell you how to do your pizza. job. It's too much. I don't know what you. I don't know uh, if you know what a pizza. I'm not trying to tell you how to do your job here. I'm just saying. I'm just saying you should make this. Just do it, man. <laughs> Mafia dunk of the style is too much of the meat and the cheese and the stuff and the pizza. <laughs> I would like my pizza to be all sauce. Pizza. Yeah. Pizza. I want a jar of sauce and call it a pizza and charge for a pizza with a jar. Of Put sauce. it in the oven. Bake it. Uh, for, for lunch every day in grade school, my mom would make us peanut butter and jelly pizzas. Ew. <laughs> I don't even know what this anymore, so what's honestly. next for the future of podcasts yeah oh. Tyler where are you going to take this podcast next yeah yeah well in all fairness what, what are we doing are we <laughs> talking about stuff <laughs> well we, we were it's just that we ran out of stuff to talk about so now we're just yeah, ripping off it's an excuse to hang out and talk this is a lot how we write the scripts exactly I would assume because I'm over there. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Don't be surprised, listeners. Don't be surprised if uh, there's a new cast member on season three of Welcome to Anadonia. Whenever that wank. comes out. <laughs> wink, wink, nudge, boy. nudge. It's just a weird <laughs> stick. Okay, so, guys. if you had an appearance on one uh, local independent puppet show, which show would it be? I'm just curious. Uh, let's see. I'm trying to think. Okay, here's an easier question. If you had to say who's your favorite of the four of us, who would you pick? <laughs> yes. Yes? <laughs> yes. Uh, yes. Jeff. Paul. Jolie. Yeah. Okay, here's, here's, okay, All I gotta do this the right way. Eeny, meeny, miny, mo, catch a tiger by the toe. If he hollers, let him go. Eeny, meeny, miny, Paul. Okay, that's fair. Paul Bless is. Up. Bless up. <laughs> pa Paul's the best. Uh, you know it's Jolie, right? Like we we are all of our favorites is Jolie. <laughs> yeah. Okay, that's true. That's valid. Why? Because yeah. I'm the girl. Yeah, because you're the girl. 
<laughs> no, because yeah. you're on. Awesome. I've, I've been playing a video game this entire podcast. Oh, <laughs> I just made a game. Smash Brothers, Jolie. Not, not Smash Brothers. I haven't been playing that. I just got it, is what I'm saying. Oh, you just got it. Oh. Yeah, it's nice. awesome. All right, I'm already bored with what you guys are talking about. So, uh... <laughs> you guys want to meet my daughter? Yeah. Yes. All right. Hold Absolutely. On. What? Which one's Which one's Penny and which one's Daisy? The dog. Sure, sure monster. Don't. I think da- I think Daisy. Yeah, the Penny dog. is his human child, and Daisy is the dog. Okay. Did he just like put them both in a room together? <laughs> <laughs> they watch each other. They babysit each other. They babysit Jeff. Yeah. Hi. Yeah. Oh my hi. god. Hi. Hi. <laughs> hi. I can't see. Oh, hi. Hi. We're doing an interview. Oh my god. We have two. We have two very special guests with us. Uh, we have uh, Jeff's daughter and Jeff's Jeff dog. dog. Welcome. Oh, to we the always show. forget to mention that the week that we filmed season two. Is like the week that I got Daisy. Yeah. So oh that when I and I always forget to mention when people have asked like what's the mo- what was the most awkward pa- part I about like filming was probably like having to bring my three month uh, old dog <laughs> to set every day. I don't really like that. <laughs> what did she say though? This is important. Yeah. What? What do you what? Tell me what you're thinking. <laughs> Penny, will you sing your song for us? <laughs> Penny, here's an important question for you. Who's your favorite character in Welcome to Anadonia? Good answer. <laughs> we agree. Perfect. <laughs> People are going to think it's Jeff doing a fake baby. Boy. <laughs> People, we assure you. People, we assure you, this is not Jeff Wilkerson wearing a mask, dressed as a baby, doing a voice. This is this is the real deal, right here. Penny, what was the most difficult part in writing season two? <laughs> okay, that makes sense. You guys are really. Uh, what what was your here, Penny? Right? What was your biggest influence? When you were directing, I just went. 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 It's my podcast. My no I'm kidding. Penny, what who would you say is your biggest influence? <laughs> we gotta write a part for this kid for season three. Yeah. I think it's a clown. <laughs> clown. <laughs> no, it's it's the uh yeah, it's the pet clown that randomly ends up on Jeff's doorstep. <laughs> uh, yeah. And the and the whole and the whole arc of season three. The Moses just, you know, story. Like, yeah. Yeah. It's just ripping off Baby's Day Out. Penny's a big Baby's Day Out fan. <laughs> yeah, baby's so Day cute, Out too. Man. This time it's harder. <laughs> <laughs> no. Baby's Baby's Day Out too. Son of Baby's yeah, Day. Son of Baby's Day. Yeah. <laughs> hey, hey, what's next for you in uh, in your illustrious career as a filmmaker? What are you gonna do next? She's thinking. She's thinking. <laughs> do you think you'll move into film? Yeah, do I do? Yeah. Oh my god. I don't want to Right, Penny, your biggest collaborator is Daisy the dog. What does she bring to the table? <laughs> she the dog. What's Daisy, what's Daisy lo- like to work with? Is she a diva? What's it's Daisy say? Daisy. 
Well, there you have it, folks. <laughs> folks that's it for Welcome to Anadonia. <laughs> <laughs> Daisy, Daisy the dog is a problematic fave. Um, I feel like I'm getting upstaged by Penny right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, Jolie, as you age, you're going to get used to that. Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah. Water people taking over. <laughs> I'm funnier. Ah. Oh my God. Penny, your dad's a goof, isn't he? She knows. I that was she, knows. <laughs> she doesn't. She doesn't want to say yes, but she knows she's right. She just doesn't want to let us feel. Hey guys, in all seriousness, are we done? Because it's getting hot in here. I don't know the <laughs> Well, okay. Well, I have actually. I, have, I actually do have some other stuff I gotta do, so I will. So we will be signing off here. Uh, so when can we see season two of Welcome to Anadonia? Great question. Yeah, good question. Um, <laughs> we're finishing it up now. And we've been talking about how we're gonna how we're gonna release it. Uh, so my my assumption is in the, the next two years. <laughs> we still have one more scene to shoot, I think. No, we we shot everything. No. <laughs> yeah, we shot everything. We're just finishing some animation and some little stuff. Some little things. Um, yeah, the, but the, yeah, Paul, the bad reality, Tyler, is we don't know, but we, you'll be the first to know. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. All right, sweet. And uh, where can we see it? Welcome to Anadonia. Uh, right, right now, you can watch it on YouTube. You can watch everything we've done on our YouTube page. Um, if you uh, go to, we have a website, don't we? Welcome to Anadonia.com, I think. We do. Yeah, you guys are on Facebook, Twitter, all that stuff. I'll put. I'll put links in okay. the description. Yeah. Yeah. Welcome to .com is, is our website. How about that? Thank God. <laughs> yeah, you can watch. Perfect. All right. Is there anything? Is there anything else anybody wants to plug? Like any personal projects or something? Because you could. You, we could totally do that. I would like to plug the uh, album that Penny and I will be putting out. <laughs> <laughs> the the fire the newest the most fire. <laughs> You're in the New York area listening to this for some reason, and you're around on July 6th, uh, come to my new show, Gamer Bay at Baby Castles. How excited right. do you sound about that, Jolie? <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm directing okay. a friend show in Philadelphia in September uh, at, uh, at Fit, so that'll be a thing. Uh, It'll be a fringe show about Philadelphia, a sketch show about Philadelphia fit. That will be good. It will be. It will be good. It will be incredible. Yeah, I'll make um, it real funny. I'm thinking about writing a comic book. <laughs> so people can support. <laughs> I'm, I'm, all, I'm also about baking a cake. I might do. <laughs> <that. laughs> I might move along later. I don't know. Yeah, there could be a topiary in front of my house later. Not sure. <laughs> I'll shoot my delete. In all honesty, um, <laughs> me and the Muppet Boys are going to start offering classes and uh, puppetry and things like that in the area. So mm -hmm. that, that'll, you know, something to look out for if you're interested in puppetry. Uh, oh, yeah, wow, that'll yeah. be fun. Maybe. It might not be. I don't know. I, it might be boring. We'll yeah. puppets, puppets aren't boring. No, they're not, but people can be. Um, <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, that's a wrap, everybody. Thank you so much for being on the show, and we will good interview, guys. Bye, bye. Woo!